اتخذت قرارا ان يعتبر توظيف احد ذوي الاحتياجات الخاصه بمثابه توظيف اثنين في حساب السعوده انا اود ان اجعل مسك الختام معكم اليوم انني اتخذت قرارا الان بان يصبح توظيف احد من ذوي الحاجات الخاصه بمثابه اربع عمال سعوديين في السعوده شكرا We'll go out together, but I just have to make final comments. Thanks very much. Thanks for handling. That was a triple translation for those of us in English, so, and it was very smoothly done. So I appreciate the uh, brevity of that uh, request and comment at the end. Just a quick reminder, we're going to start here promptly. Uh, we certainly try at 1.45, so make it a brief lunch. I know it's a lot of networking. After lunch, we're going to move from value creation through alliances and partnership to the power of collaboration. And we also have a visit this afternoon from uh, Sir Richard Branson, who's going to address the audience. Another round of applause for the minister, and thanks a lot for your questions from the floor. Nicely done. this final afternoon of the Jeddah Economic Forum. And our theme, as you can see, landscaping the future, who should take the lead? In this final session, we are going to be looking at who will take us forward, which brilliant academics wrestling with such issues as biotechnology will emerge from their laboratories find startup capital and create brand new wealth creating enterprises businesses that we have not seen before putting down markers for a brave new world and which existing entrepreneurs business giants and financial architects will recast our world what will their qualities be now, we know that they will have some things in common. They and their enterprises will be outward-looking, not self-satisfied, inward-looking masters and mistresses of what is fading fast. They will be sensitive to the world they occupy, the communities that they are a part of, and the people they employ, as much as the people that they see and deal with as customers and they'll see those employees and customers as partners not just in an after sales sense but in things like product innovation and one of the most important drivers to this whole process will be the idea of corporate social responsibility the rights and responsibilities of corporations in relation to the communities that they manufacture in, trade with, and invest in. That will create real benefits, not always easily identified on the bottom line of a balance sheet. Those people will change for better the communities they operate in, rather than being unwelcome but necessary visitors. They will employ willing and eager partners rather than wage slaves. They'll be sensitive to the environment, to our ecosystem, however much they still need raw materials, resources and human capital. But what makes them do it? rather than cut and run for that bottom line. 
A sense of responsibility in the private sector is nothing new. Carnegie, Cadbury in the old days, Gates and Branson in the new era. They've always known it. Why have so many forgotten or never grasped the mutual benefit? And what are you as individuals and your companies doing? How do you match up to those challenges? How attuned are you to the value sets, cultural systems and beliefs of the communities that you operate in? So big questions as always and remarkable people to address them. First, a voice from one of those multinational companies whose name and product range is known and respected on a worldwide scale. The short history of mobile telephony has thrown up an inevitable array of statistics. There are now more mobile phones than there are people in my own country, and a few brands really straddle this revolution and few more than Nokia, a Nordic business whose echo is heard in virtually every corner of the globe. It gives me great pleasure to invite to address you now Mr. Mark Selby, Vice President Collaborations of Nokia. Would you join me in welcoming him? Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is a privilege and an honor to be here at this forum. In the time I have available, I would like to address how we as a company are addressing innovation and collaboration and share with you some of the experiences that we are seeing at the moment. I must say I'm delighted to have met so many loyal Nokia customers while I've been here. Thank you to all of you. As a company, we are 142 years old. We started as a paper company. We then transformed ourselves into a rubber company. And from that, we transformed ourselves into a telecommunications company. Every day, we source 329 million parts around the world. We build a million phones in our every day in multiple models. In fact, in Q4, we built 1.43 million every day. And we ship those devices in multiple variants in 46 different languages around the world. In Q4, we exceeded 40% market share globally. As you'll appreciate, we were very pleased with that, and you might be surprised by some of the things I will be taking you through. The first is that we have to supply a range of devices because our research has shown that people have fundamentally different requirements for their devices. There are those simplicity seekers who simply want a device that can make a phone call. At the other end of the scale, we have technology leaders. And in between, we have a whole range of individual groups. And we watch these individual groups very closely we maintain a dialogue with them so that we understand what their changing needs are. <clears throat> As was just mentioned, there are some fascinating statistics around. My favorite is the following. Today, there are 6.7 billion people on this planet. There are 3 billion mobile subscribers and only four billion people on this planet own a toothbrush. 
We have not seen such ubiquitous technology before. So you might ask, well, why on earth would a company like Nokia be concerned or be going through the changes that I'm about to address? Well, despite this extraordinary market size and despite our performance, we are conscious of the fact that there is nowhere to hide. We constantly have to be looking at threats, at changes, and we have to understand where we are going as a company. And within the technology sector, time does not wait for us. It doesn't wait for anyone. The cycles of development of change are so fast that we have to constantly be dealing with that change. It takes a long time to build a new device. We have to be certain that when we start designing the devices of the future for the next two or three years, we have a pretty good understanding of what customers want and what technologies are available to ensure the success of those devices. We look at inventions and we look at innovation. Within Nokia, we believe that inventions become innovations when they create clear consumer delight and drive economic value. Without those things, they are interesting. We have to ensure that there is a true financial return driven by consumer excellence and demand. To achieve this, we focus on what we term co-creation. We realize that we are not clever enough to be able to do everything ourselves. Despite 14,500 people in our research units, we work closely with many other bodies and individuals. We work closely with universities and research institutes around the world. We work with international organizations to understand their requirements. I'll give you a simple example. We look at the ability to consume media on devices. For many people, it is assumed that younger people simply want entertainment. By working with bodies like UNHCR and other organizations, we know that children, particularly refugees, have one primary interest in entertainment and content. That's news. And we need to ensure that these special requirements of special groups are met. Clearly, we work very closely with Nokia Siemens networks on building infrastructures. We work with many corporations, some that might be deemed our competitors at times. But we have learned that we have to collaborate. We might compete in certain areas, but there is greater benefit to everyone if we work together, particularly on developing open standards. We work clearly with mobile operators and service providers. We work with startups and entrepreneurs, because as was mentioned earlier today, we see that creativity coming from individuals, coming from these startups. And finally, I want to mention